This is Rabbi Tuli Weiss with Breaking Israel News, and I'm sitting here with my good friend, Rabbi Yehuda De Glick. So nice to have you. Shalom, Rav Tuli. It's great to be here. Last week, you were with your wife on vacation. And yes, I came were. back for a meeting. So tell us what happened last week. Okay. Thursday evening, we finished a, a three-day wonderful vacation, which really summarized a very hecky, hectic year. And my wife went home, and I went to Jerusalem, and we had a, a meeting a dialogue meeting uh, with people from a variety of the Israeli society. What was it called? Siach Shalom, which is like a dialogue of peace. Mm. Uh, people from the far right, far, way, uh, far left, ultra-Orthodox, uh, uh, 20 people from just, just talking and listening to each other. And it, uh, that was over at around uh, close to 10 p.m. Okay. And uh, we drove home, uh, the rabbi of my yeshuv, Rabbi Reim HaKohen, and myself, we were driving home uh, through Gush Etzion to Hebron towards my house in Otniel, and suddenly it was uh, right uh, near a place called Beit Umar, which is a, a, a Palestinian Arab village, and suddenly we had was stoned from several different directions. It was wow. like stones coming over, and stones, not pebbles, stones. Wow. Uh, the front windshield was totally, uh, what you call, spiderweb, uh, uh, and, and my side window, miraculously, uh, the, he had just changed his window to a plastic window, mm. and... Uh, like a it, bulletproof, a stoneproof? It's not a stoneproof, a stoneproof window, and many of the uh, settlers in, uh, in, in Judea and Samaria used those kind of windows. By the way, one of the reasons why I was not driving home with my car is because uh, Lately, in the last few weeks, there were some stone throwing in my car. It's not the not have plastic windows, and my, my wife. My, is that your family car? My family car does not right now does not have plastic windows. The plastic windows have been have been ordered already. Wow. Uh, okay. After that, okay. but uh, I was driving with Reverend, and I was so my window was really received a few a few welcoming uh, uh, pebbles. Uh, so uh, Baruch Hashem. Uh, we, afterwards, we. So, what happened? Did you stop the car? Did you we, keep no, going? No, the first thing we did was keep going. And that, that's something we, 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 we always tell people because when, you, when you're being stoned, you're always on the, on the bad side. You don't want to get. If you stop the car at that moment, you, you're, you're, you're in a booby trap. You're, you're, you're really uh, trapped uh, to dead. And so, we continued on for. And we for, immediately called the, uh, the, the army and we notified them. And it turned out that there were. Two more cars in front of us that had already been stoned, and the army was on their way there. Wow. In one of the cars, a pregnant woman woman was 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 wounded, uh, injured. Baruch Hashem, uh, not severely, but the, her glass uh, spread all over her face. Wow! Uh, and so she was on, on her way, ready with the, with the ambulance, and the, and the the army was on their way there. Um, I immediately sent out a, a, a message to all the people from my from my settlement. Who I have on my uh, on my cell phone, warning them: don't drive here. They're they're car they're they're throwing stones on the road. Uh, be, be, beware of what's going on. And uh, so uh, now it happened to be we're talking about October 29th, which one year ago, October 29th, at the exact time. They're a little bit different time. The last year it was 10:05. This year it was 11:04. So I said a year ago, one year, one hour, one minute. A year, uh, exactly a, a, a year, an hour, a minute later, and uh, um, I was Baruch Hashem. Um, once again, Save God me. protected me, and uh, and it really was a, a, an interesting feeling. And after this, is really you know coming back from this peace dialogue, calm, uh, comprehensive listening uh, to an atmosphere of the. Uh, where, where the real, the real, real world is happening, and people where there's a lot of hate in the streets, and uh, and really, and this is what we're all about. We're, the whole concept that works, what I'm talking about, and is I, I refer to myself as, as as a peace activist, and this is what we're really what we're, we're we're trying to say that God is a God of peace, and the message that Israel and the people of Israel and the nation of Israel and the land of Israel is trying to say, and of course this message coming from the Temple Mount is the message that that. We are here speaking peace. Our uh, neighbors, the uh, so-called neighbors, enemies, 
are talking in a totally different language. So how do you understand that the whole world right now, the focus of the world right now is exactly the, you know, the apple of God's eye is on the Temple Mount. In the world's newspapers <clears throat> and the TV stations, everyone's talking about the Temple Mount as the source of incitement, as a source of violence. And that, unfortunately, that is the situation today, because the Temple Mount has been taken hostage by a, a, not a religion, by a cult in the religion, by radical Muslims, uh, what's, what's called the uh, Islamic, North, uh, North Islamic uh, movement, which is, uh, has taken over the Temple Mount and, 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 and it has used, are using and exploiting the Temple Mount and using it to incite terror. And what we're trying to promote, and this is what we're, we're calling upon the world and saying, guys, listen, the Temple Mount has to be what it's, what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a world center for peace, not a world center for hate. And, and therefore, and that's one of the reasons, this is, what, one of, this is what my life is devoted to. Trying to reach the point where the Temple Mount, when a person hears the word Temple Mount, immediately his association should be peace, like Isaiah says. And here comes the, the prophecy, no more war, no more bloodshed, and, that, and that, that, that's what should be. And this is where we're, we're and it's going to change only if there's a world international demand to change it. And one of the things that we're doing is, is what, that's what we're doing in, in our teaching, in our guiding, in our books, teaching about Temple Mount and what it's supposed to be. So you mentioned your book, that you just recently came out with a new book about the Temple Mount. Can you tell us a little bit yeah. about that? The book, Arise and Ascend, which was just published by the Temple Mount Heritage Foundation. Uh, really, by the way, we call the book Arise and Ascend, because you don't just go to the Temple Mount. It's, 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 you rise, you ascend from your day-to-day -day life to something much more, not just climbing a mountain, it's, it's ascending to, to, to a different, to a world, to a godly world, where you're transparent in front of God. And the book tells the story of the Temple Mount. The history, the archaeology, the concept, the, the, the sense, the incense of, of, the whole, of the whole story of the Temple Mount, and why it plays such a central role in the world, and of course in Jewish tradition, and, and, and why there's a need for a call from the world to say the Temple Mount has to be a place of peace. So you rise and ascend, it's like a guided tour for a tourist, but not only for a tourist, it's for any single person in the world who wants to know about the Temple Mount. This is what he wants to do. So I believe we have a copy of the book yeah. here, Arise and Ascend, that's available on your website, templemountheritage.com. .com, and everyone can check it out. By the way, it came, out, book. it came out now in English, Hebrew, and Russian. Amazing. And we're dying to have it come out in Arabic. <laughs> but now we're actually working on, on towards the Portuguese and the German. Rabbi Yehuda, thank you so much for coming and telling us, sharing us with your miraculous story. His story. Hashem should uh, continue to bless you with health and with safety by, too. By, by the way, that's why it's called history. It's his uh, story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. All right. How do we do? Not bad for the first time. <laughs>